It's finally here. The Acara G3 camera is available in North America. This isn't just another Acara hub, this one is pretty special. I've been enjoying testing this out and today, I'm gonna to tell you why I think the Acara G3 may just be the best indoor home kit camera on the market. Hi everyone, I'm V. Brad Lloyd and welcome to my channel all about making your home smart using Apple HomeKit. A car makes a wide array of accessories that are not only affordable, but they're fast and reliable. In fact, the more I use a car, the more impressed that I've been. They're speedy and dependable thanks to their Zigbee hubs. A car doesn't just make bulky hubs that sit around and collect dust though, they always come with some really great features. Most comparable to the new G3 is a car's much smaller but still capable G2H camera hub. Like the G2H, the G3 also has an alarm mode, it communicates using Zigbee 3.0, and it's compatible with HomeKit Secure Video. But the G3 has much more and includes facial and gesture recognition features, both of which can be used to trigger home automations or notifications. A 110 degree wide angle lens and the pan and tilt motor, which provides up to a 340 degree rotational angle left to right and 45 degrees up and down with automatic cruising and face and pet tracking. 2K high resolution 2304 by 1296 pixel sensor and infrared night vision. There's an infrared controller similar to the M2 hub that can be used to make remote control devices smart. Great for TVs, speakers, battery operated candles, and so on. And because of the pan and tilt, it's even easier to get line of sight with the device that you're trying to control. The G3 is dual band, meaning you're not limited to 2.4 gigahertz and can take advantage of five gigahertz. There's a privacy shutter that physically covers the lens with those cute sleepy eyes. So as you can see, this hub is jam packed with features. A huge thank you to Akara for sending this to me. Now let's get this out of the box and I'll give you my honest feedback. Are these features overkill? Is it worth the price? Let's find out. So as usual, there's a little instruction book for your reading pleasure. Then you will notice we have, yes, a USB-C cord. And this will connect to the included USB power brick. Then it's the star of the show, the G3 camera hub. I always thought the G2H looked like a little cute robot, but the little cat ears on this just take the G3 to a whole new level of adorbs, and my daughter is especially a huge fan. Those cat ears appear to be made of silicone and can be easily removed if you choose. You can also see there's a speaker on the back, and we'll test this out a little bit later and compare it to some of a car's other hubs. There's also a quarter inch thread that could be used in theory for mounting, though keep in mind, no mounting brackets included. Setting up the hub is simple. There's no ethernet option, so for the physical setup, all you need to do is plug it in. If this is your first Acara product, then you'll wanna download the Acara app, as this is where you'll need to go to add your child devices, download firmware updates, and where you can access all the features that this camera hub has to offer. As you can see, you just need to select the G3 camera from the list of hubs that you wanna set up. You'll then be asked to long press the button on the front of the hub for 10 seconds until you hear the Ready to connect. Please open the Acara Home app. You then need to scan the QR code from your phone with the G3 camera until you hear the message that the hub has been bound successfully. The account is bound successfully. Welcome aboard. You can then follow the steps to bind it to HomeKit through the standard process of scanning the HomeKit code and selecting the room. Since this is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video, you can see the typical recording options which can be easily changed at any time within the Home app. I love that this camera is compatible with HomeKit Secure Video, which is included in your iCloud plan. The 50 gigabyte plan supports one camera, the 200 gigabyte plan supports up to five cameras, and the two terabit plan now supports unlimited cameras. Worth noting, the camera storage doesn't count against your iCloud plan, which is nice. Now, unfortunately, HomeKit Secure Video only supports 1080p resolution, and it doesn't include any of the pan and tilt controls. This is a limit of HomeKit Secure Video, and hopefully full support will be added in the future. Let's do a quick comparison between the G2H camera hub and the new G3 camera hub. As you can see, the G3 is quite a bit larger. 
Using screen recording, here's what the video looks like side by side. This is during the day, and then this is at night using night vision. Here's a speaker comparison. Now let's take a look at some of the camera features specific to the G3. Below the video, there's a few icons. First is privacy mode. I love how the G3 looks as it goes into sleep mode. Since the lens is rolled up, you have peace of mind knowing that it's not accidentally recording. Additionally, the mouth of this sleepy face is the micro SD slot for local storage and supports up to 128 gigabytes of memory. This is four times the amount of storage that was available on the G2H. Of course, this isn't included and will need to be purchased separately if you want to have the option for local storage. Next to that, you can take a screenshot. The record option can save video locally to your iPhone, which you can then view in the Akara app or in your photo library. Under control, you can adjust the pan and tilt of the camera. You can either press the directional controls or use your fingers to swipe in the direction that you want to view. To the left of the directional control is your infrared controller, and we'll look at this in a few minutes. To the right of the directional control is predefined position. Here you can select the camera position such as leftmost and topmost. And by pressing the plus, you can add a custom position. Under advanced, you can select human or dog and cat tracking. When enabled, the camera will either follow a person and ignore pets or vice versa. I don't have any cats or dogs, so this is a little bit hard to demonstrate, but you can see the camera following me when I move. Cruise lets you set a cruise path based on different paths, so you can scan a specified area of your home. I've just created a test path which goes from leftmost to rightmost to topmost for 10 seconds each and repeats for up to 5 hours at a time. This is a great way to monitor more of your home when you're away. When face detection is turned on, you can trigger automations when a face is detected. While a cool feature, I struggle to see how practical this is, at least for me. You could, for example, turn on lights when a particular face is detected, but I would expect that most of the time, you would want those lights to come on for anyone, not just a particular person. But maybe you want to put the device in privacy mode when a known face is detected. There's also an option to create an automation based on an unknown face, so I suppose this could be useful to perhaps alert you that there may be an intruder. If you can think of a good use case for this, then please let me know in the comments. Aside from automations, another useful feature of face detection is simply creating a notification so, for example, you know when your children have arrived home from school. Gesture is another one of those features that may not be widely used, but it's also pretty cool. There are five gestures to choose from. Any of these gestures can trigger an automation. Of course, you're limited to automations in the Akara ecosystem, so this is especially useful for those of you that have a lot of Akara accessories. If you wanted to set a HomeKit scene with a gesture, there are roundabout ways for doing this. For example, I've created an automation in the Akara app that turns on my Akara smart plug when I do the OK gesture. Then in the Home app, I've created a separate automation when the Akara smart plug turns on, it sets my chill time scene. It's kind of cool in my opinion. Under more is where you can see additional settings. You can also get there by clicking the three dots on the top right. Here you can control a variety of things such as video settings, turning on the LED light, and adding faces. You can also customize alerts associated with face, human, cat and dog, motion, abnormal sounds, and gesture detection. You do need to have a micro SD card in the G3 in order for this to be enabled. The G3 is compatible with all four alarm modes, off, night, away, and home. Only car sensors can trigger an alarm for unintended motion or door or window being opened, but definitely a nice feature, and if you have other Akara hubs, then the alarms can be synced between them all. If anyone's interested in a dedicated video on the Akara security system, then let me know in the comments. There's also an infrared blaster on the G3 hub. I remember making my infrared fireplace smart earlier this year by using a relay switch and adding a smart plug. At the time, that was the easiest and most economical solution. Even other IR blasters that I considered would need to have line of sight to the fireplace, which isn't necessarily convenient. But by using the G3 with a simple gesture or button push, I could have pointed the camera towards the fireplace to turn it on. Pretty cool. 
Let me demonstrate how easy this is to program. I'll use my TV as an example. Since it's connected to an Apple TV, then I can use Siri to power it on or off. But what if I wanted to switch inputs? Here's what I would need to do. Simply select the device that you want to add, a TV in my case, then select the manufacturer. You'll then be asked to test some buttons, power and volume in my case, to make sure that it works. Then you're done. If you can't find the device that you want to add, then you can easily set this up manually by using your device's remote control, like in this example where I'm using the Akara M2 hub to learn the remote for my battery operated candles. Lastly, did I mention that this is a hub too, right? It's Zigbee 3.0 compatible and it can be paired with up to 128 devices. If you haven't gotten into the car world, then now's a great time. There's so many ways to build your smart home and it's not gonna break the bank. This is clearly a pretty amazing camera and I 100% recommend it. So let's talk price. Discount codes will be in the description and a car has some pretty insane Black Friday deals but for the purpose of comparison, I'm gonna use regular price Canadian dollars. The G3 is the most expensive hub as you would probably expect, and it comes in at $139.99. With all the features and video quality, I think this is a great price. If you're in the market for an indoor camera, but $139.99 is a little bit steep, or simply includes features that you're just not going to use, then the G2H is still a solid option at only $89.99. The M2 Hub is even less at $74.99, and it includes an infrared blaster much like the G3. The M1S sells for $64.99, and it includes a cool ring light and has the loudest speaker of all the hubs. And finally, if you don't need any bells or whistles, just a quality hub to start using all of the cool accessories that a car offers, then I recommend the E1 Hub at only $39.99. I've done videos talking about all of the Akara hubs, so I'll link a playlist in the description so you can learn more. Hopefully this video was helpful, and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Are these features overkill or totally amazing? Thanks as always for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.